morning, everybody. Um, what, what I am up to is I started a um, sorry. I started a new personal like life tracking site for myself. So whenever I do something on like Twitter, Pocket, Facebook, all that, it logs it in one place so I can remember how much I love the internet. Uh, do you guys love the internet? Yeah. It's awesome. That's why we're all here. Um, but another reason why we're all here is because presumably we've taken time out of our week, uh, you know, probably something came on Friday, took off work, and then you're coming and spending your weekend instead of doing something like, uh, if not, I'd probably be playing Pokemon right now or something. Um, instead of doing something like that, you're here to learn about WordPress. Um, I love it. It's what's uh, kept me from having to get a real job for several years now. Um, and I want to talk about that process with you guys. So real quick, I've worked uh, with um, other agencies uh, you know, as, a, as an employee. I've uh, worked as a contractor for other agencies. I've done the um, like Elance, getting work online thing. Um, Self-employed for several years, first at my own company, where I called all the shots, and now I am partners at a company called Dinosaur Iceberg in Orlando, um, doing all the things that were just described. Uh, and so I've gone through the, pretty much run the gamut of the different ways to work on the internet. I'm sure there's lots of other uh, creative methods out there, but the one I like best is the one I'm in right now, which is partnering. Uh, I don't have to do everything myself. I have other people who can help me uh, get all the work done, but still have a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I also have a lot of fun putting slides together, so if you don't care about what I'm talking about, at least you get to see some GIFs. But uh, hopefully you get something out of that. <laughs> so who here currently works for themselves? Okay, who here who doesn't work for themselves wants to work for themselves? So pretty much the entire room was covered in that, so you are in the right room, good. Um, for those of you who don't already work for yourselves, are you sure? Are you sure you want to? Um, you have to wear every hat when you are starting your own company. Uh, you have to wear, you have to do everything. Um, you don't have time to do everything that you need to get done. Oh, this thing needs to go to this client, and I also need to make sure that our new blog posts so more people can find us, and I also need to make sure that I get these tax forms filled out, and uh, I also need to make time to spend with the kids and make time to eat and work out so I don't you know, die sitting in front of my computer. Um, if you are starting your own company, you don't have regular income, generally. You, know, you have these feast and famine periods where you are getting 10 clients in this month because whatever, this is just the month that all the stars aligned and everyone decided that's when they want to give you a call. And then in three months, no one calls you for a month or two. Uh, so there is the potential that you won't have regular income. Uh, you need to be able to manage all of these costs yourself. You're not going to be able to just expense something to your boss. You're not going to be able to um, say, well, you need this tool, and here, you pay for it. Or you're not going to be able to say, uh, you, know, you need to pay for better internet access at home because that's kind of one of the important things for working on the internet. You need to have internet access. Uh, you also need to maintain your own work-life balance. Um, it means something different for everybody. I know some people say that doesn't exist, can't happen. Uh, some people are very militant about, I clock out at this time and I'm done. Um, or maybe you do something in between. Sometimes I just, I mean, I like being on the internet. So sometimes in the evening when I'm done with dinner, I just want to sit down and get to work on something. Or last night I was doing some client work after, uh, after I left the party and everything. Uh, you need to be able to manage all of those client relationships yourself. One of the things that I liked best about being an employee at someone else's company is that I was handed a list of tasks. I was able to complete those tasks, check them off, my day was done. Now I have to do all those things like following up with somebody and making sure that this invoice gets paid and giving this person a call and, uh, oh, this thing went over time or over budget, so now we need to make that phone call that I don't really want to make. Or, uh, you know, now we need to find some new people because we need to find some new clients. So I need to manage all those relationships. All those extra things that you're doing this because you really like building themes, let's say. Uh, but that's not a business. That's one of the things that you're selling. You have 90% of the rest of the business that, uh, that you have to do to do that one thing that you like. Uh, and finally, you need to find some kind of market or niche. We're going to go over all these um, things a little bit more in depth. But what I mean there is you're going to have to, uh, 
to be. You're going to have to choose that thing that you're going to work on as opposed to doing everything. I love doing everything. I can't make time to do it all. And sometimes I oversell myself on, oh, yeah, we can get that done this week. Or, oh, yeah, I've never used this uh, tool before, but how hard can it be to learn? And then, <laughs> right, how hard can this be? Uh, let, me, let me just take some time. Um, and then that time turns into weeks overdue or, oh, we need to retool everything we do because I found this new tool. Um, it's, it's, there's too much to do. Uh, so that said, I love what I do, but it is, I mean, it's hard work, right? Working for yourself. There's way more than you probably thought when you went into it. For me, I know. <laughs> uh, so there are some steps that you're going to take. I am going to talk on all these things as a very broad overview, but if you, you know, have, like, if you're here for some specific tools, I'm going to list a couple of those as well. Um, and then, of course, at the end, if you have specific questions. You need to have some sort of plan. This is pretty much me whenever, I, uh, uh, <laughs> whenever I'm talking to clients. I'm like, okay, I have, I have time to get this done. And then I kind of, I don't know where the time goes. I'm sitting, about to do some work, and crap, this thing is due today, and I haven't even started. <laughs> um, you have some sort of plan before you get started. So... There's a, again, I'm just going to run through these real quick. You need to have some sort of client relationship management tool. You need to have a contract tool or something to do your estimates and invoices, project management tool, time tracking, calendar, all those many things that you need to make sure the business runs. The asterisk at the end of every one is because choose the right tool for you. I'm going to give you some examples of tools to use, but it doesn't matter which tools I use. It matters which tool you'll end up using. So you might say, uh, okay, I need something to track my time. There's dozens, hundreds of tools out there for that. Doesn't matter if you find the perfect tool if you're never gonna use it. Uh, we've tried a bunch of tools that people say are the best, and just because for whatever reason it didn't fit me, I didn't end up using it, and that's worse than no tool at all. It's thinking, oh yeah, we have something for that. We just, uh, I don't know, I haven't logged into it in weeks. And then take a look. So, um, so I'll, I'll mention the ones that I do use, but I'll mention a couple of other uh, common ones. Um, you should be doing some sort of time tracking. We use Toggle internally because uh, it has a nice open API that I can put that data wherever I want and I can put it right into our, uh, our estimate, or excuse me, our invoicing system so I can just keep an eye on how much time we're spending on each project. Uh, there's other tools out there. There's Harvest. If you use them for your invoicing already, they already have their own time tracking. Why not stick with that? Um, if you don't want to have to think about it at all, Rescue Time is a really good one that uh, it can just sit on the background of a computer and log what you're doing for you. Um, then you can tag things later if you want. So you can say, okay, at these times I was working on this project or whatever. Um, that's if you really don't want to have to think about it really hard. You obviously need to keep some sort of detailed finances. You don't do what I did for the first few years and just uh, keep like a spreadsheet that had, you know, like, okay, these are the numbers and I don't know, taxes, something over here. It was, it was, kind, of, it was kind of a nightmare, but I mean, thankfully it all worked out. But if you have a system in place, it's uh, a lot better than trying to wing it when it comes tax time <laughs> um, and when it comes to getting people to pay you and tracking that they actually paid you for things. Um, we use uh, QuickBooks. There's uh, another one I used to use called FreshBooks. Harvest, again, if you use that already, if you have, you know, all of these have a lot of intermingling features, time tracking, estimates, invoicing. Uh, the tools, tools themselves don't matter, it's how you use them. You need some way to manage your projects. Um, I'm not always the best at this. I don't always take the time to log what I'm working on and I just go, oh cool, I did this thing. And then now I have a partner that's, uh, you know, that there's other, we have employees and we have a partner and, and they're like, what did you do today? And um, I have to go back and look and, you know, I don't remember. Did you get this thing done for them? I think I did. I don't know. I didn't check it off. Uh, so, so we got a little more organized. I got a little more organized working with others. Uh, my personal favorite is Trello. I even use that in my personal life just for like, I'm going to keep track of this, you know, whatever, the trip I'm going on. I'm going to put it into Trello. I uh, do all of my to-dos on a daily basis from there. <laughs> um, is there someone back there? <laughs> uh, um... We have Basecamp is another popular one. Uh, I really enjoyed it. They actually just changed their fee structure, so it's not super crazy expensive anymore. So we may look into going back to that one. And then uh, two others that I tried and personally don't like, but a lot of people love them, Podium and Asana. Um, again, I'm just going to reiterate, it doesn't matter what tool I use, just it matters what tool you are going to use. Choose one, run with it. It's a lot better than spending weeks trying to find the perfect one, as I've done. 
You need to have some sort of process while you're working. That is my process on certain days when I'm trying to figure out what's going on, what's wrong with something. Um, but that does not actually fix anything. It ends up making the problem worse. Uh, so part of my process is, as I mentioned, uh, we track everything in Trello. Um, so if anyone here is not familiar with Trello, I'm going to do a really quick, uh, I can't like point at it, but um, over on the side, over on the right side, there is a menu there that has um, the people who are involved in this project and then a stream of activity. Uh, this is a project that we were almost done with, but you notice that we have um, these lists. Those are the gray boxes at top for the, uh, for the setup, the uh, design, development, and then things that we've completed. Uh, things that are in green, those are checklists, so we were able to actually like say, we need to work on the home page, and then I made a long list of all the things that need to be done on that page, and I could just go in and check them off when they were done. You can also assign these cards to people, that's where you have our little user icons on them, and you could assign dates to them as well, so they can get notifications in whatever manner they choose of, uh, you know, this thing is due today at noon. Um, so we have that system in place that allows us to make sure that things are getting done, and if something's left behind, we can, you know, have a discussion via the card, like, why is this thing not done on the home page? Because or waiting on this picture from the client or whatever. Uh, but it's a system that makes it a lot easier when you're working with other people, but it works great when you're working alone too, to make sure that nothing gets left behind and make sure that everything's where it needs to be. Um, I mentioned that little icon up top is that you can attach files directly to these. So you could invite your clients onto this and say, you know, we need that picture for the home page, and they can just drag it right onto the page. Having this in place has saved a lot of headache of trying to figure out where I'm at what should I be doing right now that is the biggest problem that I have is when I sit down in front of the computer going, okay, great, I have a hundred things to do. What should I be doing right now? Um, that's, if somebody could make that decision for me, I would probably pay you like a lot of money <laughs> just, to, just to be able to give me the exact answer and not have me have that fear that I'm doing the wrong thing right now. Uh, I also, I know that we've had people talk about all sorts of um, frameworks and themes out there. I personally use Genesis for a lot of things. And uh, this, it doesn't matter the, the code that's up there, but what I'm displaying is a uh, part of our functions file for our custom Genesis theme that we start every project with, or most of our projects with. Uh, the idea is that we have this really strong base that we've built up over time, and every time we think, oh, there's a new way to do this uh, slide out menu for mobile, I'm going to put that into our base theme, and then we just, you know, we version control it, we have it up on GitHub, so we can um, pull it down whenever we need to start a new project. So if somebody comes to me and says, I need this theme built, when we pull that down, we're halfway done with the project already, and it gets over that blank uh, page feeling that I get of where do I start on this. I just set this up, you know, put some, some of their content on the page, and I'm already halfway done with the project. I can get that feeling of accomplishment very early on that I can keep building momentum on. Um, if anyone here happens to like sometimes, you know, I, I, I write, I'm writing a blog post, and I'll stare at that blank post page all day. Uh, you know, I can't really put any starter text in, <laughs> but uh, I can put some starter code in that, uh, that removes that fear of, uh, of staring at a blank page all day. Um, for th those of you who already work for yourselves, uh, who works from like an office or a co-working space? Yeah, it's, it's still pretty much everyone's working at home, right? Like, which, yeah. Uh, uh, so I work both from home and from a co-working space, and um, it's really hard to stay focused when you're working at home. Uh, I, I don't have anyone looking over my shoulder to make sure that I'm typing real words on the keyboard. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I, have to, I have to make ways to stay focused. And you know, there's so many tips on, oh, make sure that you have a separate office and that your family knows that this is work time and not you know, family time, and whatever, all those things. Uh, most important for me is having a routine that I stick to. So I you know, get up every morning and I have a routine for when I get started with work and when I'm done with work for the day. And other people are aware that that routine exists. So they aren't gonna, you know, if they go, oh, hey, I'm free today, you wanna go grab lunch and go to the mall or something, something that'll you know, take way too much time. I go, well, I'm working right now, um, as you know. <laughs> I have an easy out and not feel guilty saying, no, I don't want to spend time with you because I'm doing that thing that pays me to keep spending time with you. Uh, you have to have some sort of motivation for this. My motivation really is that freedom, that liberty that comes from working for yourself, that ability to say, I'm going to do what I want, 
I'm going to choose the clients I want. I'm going to decide when I feel like working. Do I want to spend time after the party sitting at work? You know, because that's what I feel like doing right now. Then I get to. Do I want to? Do I want to take a few hours off during the day to go do whatever thing it is? I can do that because no one's telling me like, no, you have to be here right now. That's my motivation. You have some other motivation. I know some people have the motivation of uh, more practical of the. You know, I was laid off and I need to make some income. Uh, there's the motivation of I'm making more money doing this than I am at this job. There's the motivation of um, I get to stay home with my family and uh, have less stress. I hate driving. So I hate it driving to the office every day. That like One, that was an hour and a half out of my day, just gone every day. And I don't even know how many years it took off my life because I just get so like, angry in the car. So that's one thing that I, I don't have to do that anymore. Uh, I work out of a co-working space, but it's, it's just a couple miles from my house. Um, you know, it, only takes, it only takes a few minutes to drive down there, or I can take my bike down there. Uh, we even have a little... Um, I have in Orlando. We have, a, we have a train system now that goes right like a block away from my office. So it's really nice. I uh, can choose if I want to go into the office that day. Uh, it's not as stressful as when I was forced to go in at exactly 9, because if you're 5 minutes late or 20 minutes early, that's not when we start work. Um, sorry, I work on the internet. You're, the internet's awake 24-7. <laughs> uh, you have to set some sort of regular goals. Um, I have goals set out both daily. These are my tasks for the day. Weekly, these are the uh, updates. We send weekly updates to our clients, so I at least know I need to have something done so I can tell these people at the end of the week what I've done this week. And then we have a couple of long-term goals. So we're interested in working on this project and uh, we know we can't get started on it now, but we are looking to do that within this year. So I have some projects, some personal projects that I'm saying I'm going to make sure I devote some time this year to work on. Uh, it's a bit longer term, but I have something to look forward to. Uh, it really helps keep you motivated when you have a plan. Um, again, that's the hardest part of my day is that, uh, is that sitting down and not knowing what I'm going to work on. Uh, the way I got over that was the night before when I'm finishing up work for the day, I look at my to-do list and I move over, so I'm doing all in Trello, I just drag over the cards to my uh, today list of the things that I know I'm going to do the next day. And then I can go in in the morning and it's basically like having someone send me the email, here's what you're doing today. Uh, I still maintain a work environment. I do have a separate office in the house. Um, I, I don't like have a whole room. It's a spare bedroom. So you don't need to, you know, as long as you have a place that is uh, set aside that isn't the kitchen table while everyone's preparing a meal or isn't, uh, isn't in the living room right next to the television. Uh, I have a place that I can stay to remove some of that distraction and that if I need to, I can shut the door. Um, but then I also differentiate between my on and off time. You need to have that moment of, I am done working for today. Uh, it's really easy to answer emails at all times a day or take client calls or you know, decide that you need to work on this because this thing is due this week and I need to do it all right now. Um, I do have that time of, uh, you know, when my significant other is home, we uh, are both done working for the day. And I can go, great, now I can do whatever I want this evening without feeling guilty. Finally, you need to have perspective. This is probably the most important perspective in my life. Uh, nothing cannot be improved with pizza. Um, I, I live by that motto. Uh, but more important, I also live by the motto that this stuff isn't important. Um, so this is important to us, this is important to our clients, but this isn't the end of the world if, uh, you know, if I deliver something a day late. Or this isn't the end of the world if, man, I thought I was going to get these five things done today and I only got these two things and I got sidetracked by whatever. Um, it's really easy to let all of those problems get to you. I've always struggled with having, um, feeling, I'll say feeling inadequate, feeling inferior in that I didn't get as much done. Or, oh man, it's really easy to get on like, Twitter and Facebook and see what everyone else is doing. Everyone is perfect on the internet, right? Like no one ever, unless it's someone that you're laughing at, like, oh, this person had a meltdown. Everybody is like, wow, this person's killing it. They're perfect. Everything is amazing. It's really easy to compare yourself to that and feel like you're not doing enough. Um, I mean, there's, there's different, I, I don't think I can tell all of you how to solve that problem, you know, because I can't just say turn it off or ignore it or whatever, but uh, find, find those wins for yourself. Find the things that, sure, if this person is doing X, but that's not really what I want anyway, so why am I jealous of them? I like 
again, for me, I like the fact that I make enough money to live comfortably at home and be able to do what I want with my day and be able to choose the projects that I like and be able to say, you don't have a budget, but I really like your, uh, I really like your company, I want to work with you. Or you do have a good budget, but I really don't like your company, so I'm not in it just for the money, you know, forget it. Like they're, you know, every once in a while you'll find that client, you, it feels really great uh, to be able to say no to people. Um, a piece, of, uh, a piece of personal financial advice that I got a few years ago. Before I went sole, solo uh, freelancer, uh, I made sure that I had you know, a fair amount of money saved up in the bank so that if I turns out I sucked at it, I could uh, go back, you know, survive for a few months. Um, but, but a good piece of advice somebody gave me was um, having an FU fund set up. Uh, and that is, um, the, the idea of that is that someone says, you know, I want you to do this, and you can go to them and say, no, you, I don't want to. Um, obviously, I don't say that to people all the time. I'm not saying, oh, just go out and tell everyone. You know, but, uh, but when you, when you want to, it's, it's really empowering. Like, that is probably the, that is one of the best things in the world, being able to say, no, I am in control of my life. I am in control of this. Uh, that's the most important thing that I get out of coming to WordCamps. That's the most important thing that WordPress has given to me, that control, that empowerment, that uh, I don't have to worry about somebody else you know, taking away the thing that I work on because it's free. It's here for us to do whatever we want with it. And we all choose to come, again, spend our weekends you know, sitting here as opposed to doing whatever else because you have a community of people around you who are totally into the same stuff you are. <laughs> Jeff? Yeah, I have a question for you. Um, one thing you did cover in the world of being your own employer right? mm -hmm. is do you set aside or do you have a certain time where you do marketing or, or reach out, um, promotion, any sort of order? Or is most of your just coming in through referral? You know, I know some people have a thing about I do like every Monday from whatever, how many hours doing my newsletter or doing. Network. You know what I'm saying? Marketing, plan, yeah, so, um, so I do discuss uh, the word of mouth on my next slide, but um, the, question, the question is um, if I set aside specific time for marketing during the week. Uh, the answer is yes and no. So yes, we do have a regular email that goes out, and uh, generally since it goes out on Friday, I'm usually working on it on Thursday because I put that off until Thursday. Um, but uh, I don't say, okay, Monday morning from this to this, that's when I'm working on this. Because the, the work I do is a bit, I would love to be a bit more structured in work, but it's, it, it's really fluid. You know, when, when you come and go, well, I thought this was going to take five hours, but it ended up taking 10 hours, so now all these other things are pushed down the chain. Um, we, we do do some uh, marketing, not, um, mainly just like, the, I don't do any paid marketing. Uh, we, we do solely like social media marketing. Uh, we put things on our blog, we um, attend events like this, which are amazing for uh, marketing. Um, but not, no, not any one specific time. Not, not any one specific blocked off time for it. Um, honestly, I kind of, like, I don't, I don't want to say I judge, but when I see something and I'm like, oh, you know, um, so-and-so shared this funny article, and then I look and it's like a buffer link, you know, it, it almost feels cheapened a bit, but I'm like, oh, okay, they weren't really thinking about this right now when I am. They were just thought about this like a week ago and just set some computer to, you know, tweet this out right now. Um, I much, I much like, I much rather like that feeling that I'm experiencing something at the same time someone else is. So if I'm like, oh, look at this cool thing I found online, that's because I just read it. And so you're going to go read it, and then you tweet at me, and it's fresh in my mind, and, you know, we can have a conversation about it. <laughs> um, so when it comes to finding customers, uh, I'm not a humongous fan of the idea that the customer is always right. Um, at the same time, I think the customer um, can be right. So the problem that I have with yeah, that is that is absolutely uh, <laughs> that is absolutely something we run into on a daily basis. So. So it's funny, it's, a, it's like, it's, it's a joke, but at the same time, I just have to be good at my job <laughs> to explain to them that, uh, that this is what you want, but this is why we can't get there right now. 
And there's so many ways you could do that. We break things up into phases so we can keep clients coming back and we can say, listen, we can do this for you right now and then let's see how it picks up your business and then we can do this other cool awesome thing that you want to do. Um, normally break it up by things that are less mission critical. You know, I don't want to say you need all this, you need this cool interaction on your page and all these cool little features that are going to take way longer and way more budget to do when really you want to find out is anyone going to actually click to buy my product? You know, and then maybe they don't and you've wasted a whole bunch of money that you didn't need to. Um, so I don't think that clients are ever wrong so much as um, either not educated or misinformed. Uh, and in that, in that case, I need to do my best effort to explain to them, here's why this is what you want and uh, this is what you can get. <laughs> Shut up, that one. Um, another, I, I need to know when I draw the line with clients. One of the important ones for me is working hours. I tell them I have, you know, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. There is way too many clients that feel like they can call at 9 p.m. on Sunday. I don't understand what it is about 9 on Sunday, but that's the time that everyone decides that they want to call, and uh, those go to voicemail, and then on Monday morning, I respond to them. I might have my phone in front of me, but that doesn't matter. That I don't want to you know, show an availability that I don't want to have. Same for responding to emails, or same for, um, I, I have clients who will try to dictate the time that I work. Like, oh no, well you can work on this tomorrow, and uh, get it to me tomorrow afternoon. And you know, you just have to go, or I can work on all of my other clients that I already have and uh, put this in the schedule that you know, I'm telling you up front. Again, it's an education thing. I tell people up front, this is when we can start working on your project. Uh, we do have a, do you want to start working on this quicker? It's going to cost more money, but uh, you know, giving people that upfront notice of this is when we can start working, it helps manage their expectations. So I can let them know that, yes, you are valued but no, you are not valued any higher than all the other people who already have come to us. I still do things to keep my clients happy. Um, I know a lot of things I've said have been kind of negative, but I don't, I'm not a negative person. I will do more than, more than my fair share of extra work for my clients. And uh, when it doesn't come to that, it's also me uh, doing a weekly uh, Q&A session for our meetup group, for doing um, a few hours of a help desk. We do those uh, at the... Orlando meetup about once a month. Uh, we do two lecture meetups a month, and then we have WordCamp. I travel to other WordCamps. I do plenty of extra work for people for free. That, uh, that doesn't make me feel guilty when it comes time for the paying clients. But when it comes to those clients, if they say, well, I really want to do this thing, and we haven't been able to work it out, but then, I don't know, maybe they say, oh, I want to do this tool, and we say, well, we can't really do this thing because you know, it'll take way more time, but then I find a way to do it easier later, I have no problem jumping in and just doing that for them. It gives them, um, it gives them that extra value that makes them want to keep coming back, keep referring new clients to us. I mean, everyone always says, under promise, over deliver. And that definitely works out here. I tell people, listen, this is going to take us about two weeks if I think it's something that's going to take me a week to do. That way, if uh, something does come up and it takes me, what, seven days instead of the ten days, it still looks like I did it three days early. Um, it's, not, it's not lying to the client, it's saying I'm building in some gap time so that you are going to be more appreciative when you get something. Um, I do keep, uh, we, we, we do do regular um, follow-ups with our clients every week. So we let them know here's what we are working on, uh, here's where we have a problem if we have any, um, here's something cool that we did for you. Or if it is something that's a bigger issue, I won't just wait until the end of the week to send that email. I'll say, you know, listen, we're doing this and it looks like it's going to take longer than we originally thought. I make sure that I keep people up to date on where we are because I've had so many people come to me and say, well, I paid somebody to build this site for me and then they disappeared for a month and then they came back with something that wasn't what I wanted at all. And uh, have, have anyone, have you, any of you guys gotten those clients before? Like it's, those are the best people to please just because you go, oh, that's not me. I can, you know, as long as you come and work with them on the process, we do like a waterfall process um, from that trial card for we, we do things in the, uh, you know, research, wireframing, design, development, launching, all those different phases. So we make sure that they are signing off on each one of those phases before we move to the next. There's no point that someone's like, well, that's not what I wanted at all. Um, if they ever say that, I go, well, you know, just a few days ago, you signed off on the wireframes and 
you know, why'd you sign off on those if that's not what you wanted? Uh, but more important, I'm not going away for a month and coming back to them with something that they aren't happy with. If they aren't happy with it, it's not because of a month of uh, miscommunication, it's because of maybe a week at most, and then I only have a week's worth of work to revamp it some way. That's the best way i found to get repeat business, keeping your clients happy. Clients, I've had clients that I even thought hated us who send us repeat business, and uh, another friend, they're like, oh no, it's just, you know, maybe they were having an off day when they sent whatever email or we had that phone chat, but we got the work done, we kept it under budget, we kept it within the time frame, and that's all they really care about. Do you need someone who's reliable? I know, I know this guy. Uh, that's the best way that we found to get work. Um, to answer your question, it is mainly word of mouth. Uh, finally, I'm um, sorry, I want to do one last hand raising thing. For those of you who do work for yourself, how many of you literally are working for yourself? You are the sole person in your company. Most, yeah, most everyone who uh, is already working for themselves. Um, you've probably figured out by now you can't do everything, you need a team. Uh, even if your team sometimes is a little bit clumsy. Um, but you can't do everything. You need your team of vendors around you to handle those tasks that you can't do. So a few ways that you can do that. Build, maintain relationships with other uh, people. WordCamps are a great place to do that. I develop, I don't design. Oh, great, I design, but I don't develop. Perfect, we can work together. You may not have to actually hire any, like hire someone as an employee or have someone hire you as an employee, but you can keep trading work back and forth. It's also an extra great way to garner business because there's that designer that you work with who does all your design work, and he has access to a whole different network of people, or um, there's the uh, you know, marketer that she has a whole stable of clients that, oh, well, they wanted someone to work on their site, but they didn't know anyone reliable. Now they do. Now they can send them to you. Um, you might establish your own fees to work with people. So there's a designer that I work with that we both charge each other half of what we charge our clients um, just because we keep sharing business back and forth and so it's still profitable for both of us. You can choose to do that or not do it. You can do you know, commissions. If you bring me a client, I'll you know, give you 10% or whatever. Um, those are all personal decisions to make. If you have something that you're not good at, just be aware of it and use other people to fill in those gaps. I'm not a designer, I am not a marketer. I have other people who can do those things for me. They can do it a lot better than I can in a lot less time. That's worth paying money for. I am not going to try to go out and learn something that is not in my wheelhouse at all just to save a few dollars now. Um, that's, it's not gonna give me a good client. I also try to delegate as much work as I can. So I know those things that I'm good at and I know those things that I enjoy doing, but then I also know if, if, if this project requires, let's say, a lot of data entry, I need to put a lot of posts that they have from their old site that isn't in WordPress, so maybe I can't migrate or whatever. Something, something that is like time intensive, but not necessarily very mentally intensive, I try to offload those as much as I can. You know, I have people who are no WordPress really well, even if they aren't developers, but I can just say, here, go put all this stuff in, make it look nice, clean it up, make sure, you know, whatever, everything's in there. Um, and that's, again, a lot cheaper to pay someone than take all of my own time to do it, that I could, be, that I could use that time to uh, charge a client. As I mentioned before, under promise, over deliver. Do not tell someone you can do something if you aren't 90% sure that you can do it. I do make promises that I am not 100% sure I can keep sometimes, but I never make one that I think I can't keep. It's more like, I don't know, I know that I do a lot of WooCommerce sites and I've never used easy digital downloads, but I'm betting I can do it, so I go, yes, we can do this for you. Um, or you know, some other fill in the appropriate tool. Uh, at the very least, I know that I have other people to lean on to help if I have those problems, but I am not saying, oh, well, you know, we're really great in WordPress, we've never looked at Drupal before, but yeah, I'll do your Drupal project for you. Um, and then, you know, it turns out that I have to learn a whole new system. I'm definitely not going to be able to keep that promise. Uh, but what I do like to do is learn on the job, and that's whatever you're doing, you can learn something. You're going to learn something new with every project. Uh, or at least I hope you are. I, one of the things I strive to do is learn something new with every project that we're doing, put another tool in our tool belt, keep myself mentally stimulated so I'm not just you know, doing the same thing over and over again. Um, you can do that on your own time, and you should, but you can also, again, doing that 90-ish percent promise there, you can take that extra 10% and learn while someone's paying you to do it. You know, it's, I already know I'm gonna be able to keep that promise, but bonus, I'm getting paid to learn how to use this tool. <laughs> 
Finally, uh, I'm going to start with the. Uh, I'm going to finish with the easiest task because you guys are already doing this. Stay connected. Uh, one of the best ways that I get business is from referrals, is from word of mouth, is from people that I chat with at these events. By the way, I'm going to be in the happiness bar most of the afternoon. If you guys have any questions, attend events. Uh, I. Uh, do that all the time. I love going to conferences. I love meeting new people. I love chatting about whatever problems people are having and you know maybe ways that we can solve them. Maybe I can't. Maybe I just want to chat about uh, uh, cats. I, 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 I like to, I'm a dog person. Sorry. I just turned off half the room here. Uh, Pokemon. If anyone's Pokemon, we will totally do a Pokemon battle later. Um, <laughs> but but the, the point is, uh, there are a lot of people, including you know, people in this room, that I know simply by going to these events. And I've learned about them, and I've learned about their businesses, and I've learned that, okay, this isn't something that I can do, but I can pass this on to this person. One of the biggest places that I get referrals is from other agencies. These people are not your competitors in the room, or at least not straightforward your competitors. These are potential allies. So I don't have enough time to take on this project, or this project has too small of a budget for me, or this project has too large of a budget for me, or you know whatever, fill in the blank, or oh, this person needs a um, a buddy press site, and I don't do buddy. Um, we do buddy press, but I'm gonna say I don't know. I'm thinking of an example. I'll say buddy press, and uh, oh, I don't do that, but I know this person. They're really awesome at it. Uh, that person would have never gotten that lead because they weren't here at this event, but uh, they had somebody who was there to do it for them. That's one of my goals, is to have you guys basically sell for me. Go, I know this person who you know, didn't make a total fool of himself on stage, I hope. Um, <laughs> let, me, uh, let me send him over to you. Uh, I do follow what other people are up to, so I get to see where the new trends are, so that when someone, you know, when a potential client talks about whatever new tool, I'm not completely in dark going, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, at the same time, I can offer new solutions to people. Like, well, you know, this new tool just came out that can do this for you. Uh, I just did a Shopify build a few weeks ago, and Shopify added this new WordPress integration this week. One, I would have loved to have it back then, but if anybody asks me now, I go, oh, yeah, we can do that. Um, as I mentioned before, make time to learn. Keep, keep learning new things. There is there are people here who know way, way more about WordPress and development than I do. Um, they are the best people because they love showing other people the cool things that they just learned how to do. Uh, and keep making time to keep learning that. If you just try to keep doing the same thing you're doing now you know, for the next year, you're already going to be outclassed by other people around you. Uh, at the same time, make time for yourself. Do things outside of the industry. Find other things that you're interested in. I. You know, I'm joking about it, but I do go to like gaming tournaments. I do go to nerdy events. I do go to. Uh, um, I got a client from going to B sides. I don't really know much about web security, but I wanted to learn more about it. I went on my own time and uh, got a new client out of it. Bonus. I wasn't even expecting that. Uh, so you know, do remember that there's more of a world outside of here than the marketing world or the development world or the WordPress world. There are other groups of people out there to talk to. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, that's our company. That's my weekly newsletter of weird web stuff. And those are these slides. Any questions? Oh, yes. Well, yes, clients could be done. Uh, could be. Oh, excuse me. Clients can uh, do commenting on Trello, and they can also move assets onto Trello and download them. Um, one of the nice things about Trello is that you can uh, make boards locked down to whatever level you want. So you could say they can lock, or they can, you can lock cards, so a client can't move a card from one list to another, but you can say they can still drag assets onto the card. Um, I have not. So I'm not, I'm not from here, Fellini's? Fellini. I will have to get the, if it's nearby, we're, leave, we're going back to Orlando tonight, but if it's nearby, I'll stop there for dinner. Why not? Yeah. Uh, so right now, um, I have partners. Um, I've worked with contractors in the past at my previous company, and this is my uh, fourth WordCamp Atlanta. And every year before this, I was coming in as David from Orange Blossom Media. Uh, but that was basically me with contractors. Uh, now I have Dinosaur Iceberg, which is me and four partners. Or no, excuse me, four partners total. And then we contract out a few things that we don't do. Um, a couple of them are here today. 
Um, and I'm actually giving a talk in another room right now, so can't see our, each other's talks. Uh, but we try to complement each other's skills. So I enjoy the development, but as I mentioned, I'm not really a marketer. I am not a, um, I'm not the greatest at client management. Like I don't always remember to get those emails out in time. So I have other people in the company who those are the things that they are good at. I've identified that weakness and offloaded it where appropriate. <laughs> Uh, we do that based on ownership. We do a pretty simple split. We're all even, even partners, even ownership. Um, and then the income is we do a draw on our account. Um, so we, we, we take an equal salary each month. Um, I'm sure that, I mean, it doesn't concern me quite so much to think that, oh, this month I did more than this person or this person did more than me because then that's, that's me saying to my partners, like, I don't value you as much or, um, you know, I don't think that you did as much work or I think I did more work than you. And it's really, it's different work. You know, maybe this week the thing I did was more mission critical because this client had a fire and I was the one that put it out. Maybe next week that won't be me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. How many you should try to build? I probably bill for a third of the time that I actually work. <laughs> maybe half. If I'm being generous, maybe half, but not. No, I work many more hours than I actually bill clients, which is why I have rates set up with that in mind. That uh, that those those non-billable hours doesn't mean that I'm not doing something important. It might just mean that. You know, it's important for me to make sure that this email goes out and this invoice gets created or whatever task, but that's not something I can, you know, make you pay me to do. Do you bill by hour or do you bill like based on the project? Like, you know, like here's the a real cost, this is going to be a $20,000 project, or do you go, this is my hourly? Both. Uh, so we start by billing by project generally. Um, the reason being is that we can kind of get an estimate. On how many hours it's going to be, but no projects are no two projects are the same. So I'm not going to be able to make a great estimate up front. But if I come to you and say this is our hourly rate, that doesn't mean anything to you as a client. You really want to know, okay, how many hours is it going to take? So I can charge ten dollars an hour and take a hundred hours to do something, or I can charge a hundred dollars an hour and take ten hours to do it because I'm, you know, better than that person who charged ten. Um, are they getting the same value? Probably not, but they're paying the same price. Um, but so we start by project, and then uh, hourly comes in when additional tasks are added to the scope, or if they later come back and say, you know, great, we just want to do this one extra feature now, something like that. One other question too, like website maintenance, things like that. Do you bill that? Is that like a recurring uh, monthly fee, or do you put that also into your project price? So we have a, um, we actually have a separate service set up. It's called Site Healthy. So you can find it on SiteHealthy.com if you want to look at it. It looks pretty similar to WP Site Care, Maintain, WP Curve. There's a lot of them out there that do. That, that's their whole sole project they do is maintenance. Uh, but the way that we work it in is um, our clients get a few months of that for free when they're done. Like we build that in that they get a few months of that. So hopefully they want to keep using it later. That is one that they pay either monthly or annually for, um, covering you know, hosting, backup security, ongoing maintenance, things like that, based on whatever their specific tasks require. Um, but they, they would keep paying after, after the main project is done. Uh, but we set it up as a separate, uh, we set up as a whole separate system in the event that, and I've had people do this, that that's all they want. They already have a site that they like. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, how, do you, how do you bet contractors? Uh, I get a lot of offers, you know, from Indian-based web developers. Uh, have you ever had any experience with that, or do you advise doing that, or what about uh, American subcontractors? Um, so, uh, I'll try to say this in a non-controversial way. Um, I do only work with people who I know in person, who I've already met. Um, generally, people who live in Orlando. Our entire team, we're all Orlando-based. And it's not because like, I need to see you come into the office every day or whatever. It's still everyone works remote, um, but it's much 
It's much more that I've met so-and-so and I know that they're really great at doing buddy press integrations and so I want to hire the person to do this project that is really good at buddy press uh, because you know, this project requires that as opposed to I'm going to look to get someone who can do this uh, really cheaply. Um, the only downside then is that the people who are good are usually also really busy as well. Uh, but I don't, I don't choose to not, I don't choose to uh, not go overseas um, for that. It's more just the relationships that I built up, the uh, promise of continued work. So if I'm hiring somebody overseas, say through Elance or something, which I've done before and mixed results, you know, it's not all bad, it's not all good. Um, but if I'm hiring that person, that's a one-off thing. You know, maybe I'll keep hiring them later, but it's a one-way mode of communication. But if I choose to, I don't know, pass a project on to Brad back there, because he doesn't look like he's paying attention. If I choose to, uh, to send him something, maybe he'll do the same to me uh, in the future. You know, and then, then I've made that money back. <laughs> Um, any other questions? Can you repeat what you just said? <laughs> I said Brad, no. <laughs> yes, sir. What's your uh, feeling about doing discounts? I do discounts when I choose to do them, and I make sure the client knows that they are getting a discount. Um, I try to be a bit hardline on, on our costs and everything and on, on what we do because I'm not... I get that there's a bit of negotiation that goes into it, but at the same time, when I'm making a scope for somebody, I say, this is how long it's going to take, this is how much it's going to cost. Like, that's, that's it. That's our thing. You're so good, but I, can you just help me this one time? We're a bit busy right now. Um, if you choose to come back, uh, if, you, if you can work out the budget later, choose to come back, or if you would be okay with uh, some other system, say that we work on it in spare time over the next few months as opposed to working on it solely this month. Um, or if there's some other value for that. I've done a lot of, uh, again, I've probably done more free work than I've done paid work. It's not that I don't like doing free to work, free work. It's that I get to choose those times I do it. I did a, um, you know, I, I've done sites for some nonprofits in the area or for friends or um, actually, friends are the worst, though, because then they just expect it for free. But, but I make that decision. Generally, when it comes to uh, making a scope, making contracts, they're not really negotiable. Um, it's, it's, it's more just I don't have to put as much effort or thought into it. I don't want to do an email or call chain back and forth with somebody you know, haggling on price. I would much rather just say, this is what it's going to cost. No? OK. Um, that's why we also have people who do client relationships so that now they can keep following up with those people, whereas before I probably wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, normally, so there's a few ways I could do that. One way could just be describing to them uh, all the many things, and then halfway through a description of here's you know blah 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 blah, they just are like, okay, cool, you know, sounds good. Um, or I can just you know remind them that just as you have other clients, I do as well. Yeah. I mean, most people, most people are really understanding. Like, if I, I, don't, I don't go into these things with, a, with an adversarial approach. I try to go in with a professional approach of, you know, this is, you came to us for a reason. Somebody told you that, somebody told you that we were good, or you've worked with us before, or whatever. In some way you found us. I didn't pay for any marketing, so I know it's not that you saw my billboard or my Facebook ad or something. Um, so just trust that you are going to get what people have promised you. <laughs> Um, yes? In your waterfall process, how many uh, revisions on each step, like on a wireframe? Generally two. Um, we can work that out more. We've actually had clients request more, and we've changed the budget accordingly. Uh, past two, I've done something wrong by you having problems still. Like, I've completely misunderstood your project if, if it goes past that. <laughs> but at the same time, we had, we had a client um, last year who paid us... Uh, a fair amount extra to, to have that up to three, and then they only ever actually used it on one page. But I think it was more just, you know, maybe they had it, it was a corporate concern, or they just wanted the, the security and the comfort in knowing that it was there. Um, so that, that was actually a bonus for us, but I don't really upsell that to people. <laughs> uh, but there, there is a limit on how much back and forth I will do. You know, to a point it can get excessive. Any other questions? You guys are in like the sneaky short lunch line. Oh. Yes. 
I'm, I'm sorry. Examples of contract tools. Oh, um, some examples of contract tools. Uh, so we do them internally. We actually built a cool little tool, but that doesn't really help you. Um, so two tools that I do like. Um, our tool is based off of Sprout invoices. That is a WordPress plugin that starts free and has add-ons for it. It is a... Um, it, it basically makes an invoice and estimate system on your website. Uh, I've used Proposify in the past, proposify.biz. It is a tool that makes like pretty looking, it's um, a PowerPoint system for proposals basically. Like it, it, it templates them out for you and you put your content in. Um, your contract shouldn't have to change too much. I paid a lawyer to make, to make our first contract. Uh, you know, didn't cost too much money, but we get to keep reusing that same contract while still having a bit more security than, or a bit more comfort than uh, than the one that I might have written myself, which it did start from one I wrote myself, and then she looked at it and she changed so many things. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are those are two good ones. Sprout invoices you can find it at SproutApps.co, I believe you can find it on the WordPress repo as well, um, and Proposify. Any more before we go? After lunch, I'm going to be in the happiness bar all day. If you want to talk about theme or plugin development, that's what I do. Um, I already probably sat with about 10 people yesterday, so please come find me there later. Thanks. Wow. <laughs>